Chapter Six of the Directory of a Devout Life by F. B. Meyer. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Read by Marianne. Chapter Six, Christ, the Completement of Human Life. Matthew Chapter Five, Verses Seventeen to Twenty. The first question that an age asks of a new teacher is, "What is your relation to the past?" What have you to say of the great prophets and teachers at whose feet for generations our forefathers have sat? To that question the reply has often been, My mission is to destroy. You have been misled. The path by which former generations have traveled is by no means the easiest or the best. I have come to suggest that we wipe the slate, that we obliterate the past that we begin by laying new foundations on which to construct a larger and more commodious erection. This is the creed of the revolutionary. In the French Revolution, Robespierre and his confederates went so far as to obliterate the septennial division of time, insisting that the week should consist of ten rather than seven days. New names were fixed to the days, to the streets, and to the officials of the state. But it was not thus that Christ inaugurated his work. He answered the thoughts of his age, saying, Think not that I am come to destroy. Every jot and tittle of the ancient code was dear to him. Jesus was no iconoclast. Radical though he was in going to the very roots of things, he was not a revolutionary. As the noon fulfills the dawn, as summer fulfills the spring, as manhood fulfills childhood, as the great artist fulfills the struggling ideal of the generality of men in the poem, the statute, or the sonata, so does Jesus Christ gather up the highest ideals inspired by God's Spirit in men's hearts or engraven by His hand on tablets of stone. Wherever there is suggestion of eternal truth, He realizes it, and shows men the steps by which they may climb to its lofty level. Of course, there was a measure of destruction. When the epistle of the Hebrews was written, the institutions of the Old Covenant were becoming old, waxing aged, and were nigh unto vanishing away. Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13 But the destruction was only part of the natural process through which the ideal of the ancient scriptures was being fulfilled. It was not a destruction which left no trace, as when the fire destroys the artist's studio, burning sketch and picture, the plaster cast, and the finished statue, but the destruction of the imperfect form, in contrast with the finished and completed design. Thus the rough sketch is superseded by the finished painting, the bud by the flower, the toys and the lesson books of childhood by the interests of the mature man. The emblems of the kindergarten fulfill their work in the child's mind by giving it conceptions of shape and form, and its first rudimentary knowledge. They are then cast aside, but the conceptions that they helped to form are the permanent possession of the nature which thus made its first trials on the tiny lake before it launched out upon the mighty ocean with its boundless horizon. The Aaronic priesthood was destroyed that it might be fulfilled in the one unchangeable priesthood of the Son of God. The altars on which ten thousand victims had been consumed were destroyed, and their ashes poured out upon the ground, because they were fulfilled in that one altar on which the supreme propitiation was made. The temple was destroyed, because the Shekinah of God's presence had gone forth to fulfill that temple which is composed of saved souls, and of which the Apostle says that, the building fitly framed together groweth into a holy temple in the Lord. The whole system of ceremonial observance, with which Leviticus is full, has been destroyed, because love has come to be the inner principle of the Christian heart, and love is the fulfilling of the law. Under the term Law and Prophets, our Lord includes, by a familiar Jewish abbreviation, the entire range of the Old Testament, Matthew chapter 7 verse 12, chapter 22 verse 40, Luke chapter 16 verse 16, chapter 24 verse 44, Acts chapter 13 verse 15. 
it is probable that he never possessed a copy of the old testament scriptures for his own private use the only bible that was within his reach was that which was kept in the synagogue but on his retentive memory and heart as a child mary in the home and the old rabbi in the school of the synagogue and above all the spirit of inspiration himself had deeply written the whole text of sacred writ it was thus that he knew the scriptures though he had never learned in the schools of the metropolis nothing could exceed our lord's reverence for the scriptures he quotes or refers to them four hundred times with these he parried the temptations of the wilderness met and foiled the criticisms of pharisee and scribe had consoled his own heart when it was fainting amid the shadows of calvary everything that the psalmist had said of the law and testimonies of god was literally appropriated by jesus they were sweet as honey to his taste yea sweeter than honey and the honeycomb in them he found the germ of the messianic ideal which he realized in altogether unexpected ways and to fulfill which was his one eager purpose it is not without profound significance that we are told that on the cross he knew that all things had been finished with the exception of the one scripture which told how the rejected hind of the morning should be parched with thirst and receive at the hand of its foes not water but vinegar then that the scripture might be accomplished he said i thirst john chapter nineteen verse twenty eight revised version from first to last the life of our lord was the fulfillment in spirit and letter of the ancient ritual as the son of the law he obeyed the initial rite of judaism on the eighth day after birth and there was no item of the law even to the dots of the i's or the crossing of the t's which he omitted or slurred he died for our sins according to the scriptures and he rose again the third day according to the scriptures what could only be partially true of his apostle was literally true of the lord as touching the righteousness which is of the law he was found blameless our lord fulfilled the ceremonial law luke chapter two verses twenty one twenty two and twenty seven galatians chapter four verse four and fulfilled the moral law since he was jesus christ the righteous first john chapter two verse one he honored the law by his obedience even to death atoning for its breach and violation by mankind and giving through his unknown sufferings an answer to its just dues and demands such as could not have been afforded though the whole race had been milked to the uttermost farthing of penal consequences his fulfillment therefore was not for himself alone but as the second adam the representative man and for us all isaiah chapter 42 verse 21 the law made nothing perfect hebrews chapter 7 verse 19 because it dealt so largely with particular instances and external observances and men sought to satisfy it by an obedience which consisted almost wholly in meats and drinks and carnal ordinances imposed until the time of reformation a servant in your home who has been carefully trained may fulfill all the outward demands of household work but how different is the service which is compelled by an outward rule and compensated for it by the specific wage from the service which the wife and mother gives inspired by a love which feeds upon the sacrifices it makes the law could not produce perfect characters because it did not as yet deal with the principle of the self-life which vitiates our best obedience indeed the ancient ritual in most cases even developed the self-principle as in the case of the pharisees because the accumulation of outward obedience was deemed to produce a larger amount of merit and therefore to procure a higher place in the sight of god our lord on the other hand came to teach that love would fulfil all demands of the law and the prophets and more he taught that to love one's neighbour would be the fulfilment of the law and that obedience to every commandment was summed up in one word thou shalt love in christ's teaching the whole law was fulfilled in this one word thou shalt love romans chapter eight verses eight to ten galatians chapter five verse fourteen do we then make void the law through faith no 
since faith is capacity for god it receives out of his fullness the baptism of perfect love more and more as we love we establish the law romans chapter 3 verse 31 in proportion as we walk after the spirit of love the requirement of the law is fulfilled in us romans chapter 8 verse 4 thus christ in shedding his love abroad in our hearts becomes the end of the law for righteousness to all who believe and we present before god a reverence for the ancient scriptures and a fulfilment of their precepts which could only be produced in us by the spirit of love is your soul enamoured with the love of some great ideal and is it the complaint of your life that it has been too high for you to attain are you lying at the foot of the cliff bruised and mangled by repeated failure are you almost in despair be of good cheer christ has come not to destroy but to fulfil to take each yearning purpose and conduct it to maturity to show how every desire for goodness may be realized how the crescent of promise may become the full orb of fulfilment and to accomplish in you and for you here and hereafter every jot and tittle of the divine demands end of chapter six